Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to share how I organize my work and personal life using OneNote. I've been using OneNote for about a decade now and I manage all of my work projects and meeting notes in OneNote as well as vacation planning, home maintenance, car maintenance, all in OneNote. I use a para method by Tiago Forte to organize my notes and I do have a separate video that covers the para method in more detail so be sure to check that out if you're interested. In terms of the structure, you see that I have a lot of notebooks showing on the left navigation pane. Essentially, I have two sets of four notebooks. Four for home, indicated by a house icon, and four for work. I have a project notebook for home and one for work, and the same for areas, resources, and archives. This mirrors the para framework. Starting with the project notebook, if I expand it, you can see that I have several sections for things that I'm actively working on. Projects are typically things that require multiple action steps or has some research. All active projects that I'm currently working on are kept in my project notebook. For example, I have a YouTube section where I collect research materials and video scripts for the videos that I'm actively working on. I only have one note page here because I only have one active YouTube project. Another section I have is for vacation planning. I actually just returned from my vacation from South Korea, but this section contains all of the research that I did for things like airfare and hotel confirmations. Since the vacation is over now, I'll have to move this section out of the project notebook and into the archive. And as a matter of fact, we can do that now. In the areas notebook, the first section I have is called inbox. This is where all of my notes come in. Whether I capture notes on my phone, scan a document, or make a web capture, everything comes into this inbox. It's a staging area for reviewing and distilling information before moving it into an appropriate notebook and section. This way, I don't have to think about where to put each note at the moment of capture. And it also forces me to review the notes again later and determine if they are worth keeping. I would ideally review this inbox at the end of each day, but honestly, I only review them every few days. The other section in the areas notebook are for different areas I need to maintain in my life, such as health, finance, career, and home. For example, in the health section, I track all of my doctor's appointments, test results, and prescriptions for myself and for my family. I also keep a summary page with an appointment tracker for easy reference. Again, these are areas that require ongoing maintenance. They're not projects in that they don't have a start and an end date. The resources notebook stores all my reference materials and toolkits. For example, I recently started a new job and I have a section for career resources. This might have career tips, instructions for updating resume, common interview questions, and their prepared answers. Think of it almost like a playbook. And as I get settled into my role, any success that I achieve at work, I can lock it here so that I can use as examples in the future. Even though I'm not actively looking for a new job, this information is still useful because if I find myself needing to search for a job again, I can move this career section back to my projects notebook and I have all the resources ready to go. I also have a section for YouTube guides where I keep a checklist for recording videos and tips for creating content. You can keep other things like operating manuals and user guides here as well. The archive notebook is for information I don't actively need but want to keep for reference. This includes past projects, old YouTube scripts, and even personal keepsakes like Father's Day cards. This way, I can go back and revisit these items without cluttering my active notebooks. Now these were all for my personal life. I use the same para structure for my work notebooks. In my projects notebook, you can see that I have many more projects that I manage than I do in my personal life. Each project section's first page usually includes an overview or frequently used files for easy access. For the areas notebook at work, I have an inbox for capturing ideas and notes, which I review and organize later. The people section holds information about colleagues, like their job descriptions, contact info, and even their personal interests, which helps in building relationships. The resources notebook at work contains reference materials, templates, and frequently accessed documents like fiscal calendar and intranet links. 
and the archive notebook is for completed or canceled projects. Just a quick note about canceled projects. Keep the information. In my career, there have been many instances where canceled projects are resurrected at a later time. The research and the information that you collected are valuable resources that can be leveraged if and when the project is resurrected in the future. Um, so you don't have to start from scratch. Also, the information may be useful for other related projects. So basically, don't throw away any of your work, especially if you spent a lot of time working on it. Okay, so that's the structure that I maintain for both my home and work. Now, there are many different ways to capture notes into OneNote. Most typically, I would say I just open up a page in OneNote and just start typing. And that's typically the case for meetings and things like that. Another way that I capture notes very often is to take my physical notebook, like a rocket book, or my digital notebook, like my super note, and capture information using the bullet journal method. So quickly just capturing information. Later on, I will summarize it or distill the key info, decide what I want to move into OneNote, and then I'll just move it over. Another way is if I'm doing research or if I'm browsing the web and I find some interesting information, I'll use the web clipper and just clip the information into my OneNote. Another way is if I'm on the go away from my desk and I have my phone with me, I'll open up the OneNote app and I can capture information like taking a, a snapshot of something so that it saves into my OneNote. And lastly, and this is something that I do very, very often, I actually like to keep copies of all the documents, whether they're invoices, bills, uh, any kind of official document, medical records, things like that. I have a scanner and I scan every document and I do this weekly. Uh, I'll scan it in directly into my OneNote and save it that way. So again, there's many different ways to capture information into OneNote. Um, again, this is my second brain. So everything that I need is there for when I need it. This is why I like OneNote, since it makes it so easy to capture information no matter where you are or what you're doing. When I need to retrieve information, I narrow down the search to a specific notebook or a section. Because I've organized my OneNote using the para method, it's intuitive enough to know which notebook contains what information. This really helps me find the information that I need quickly without needing to shift through too many results. Maintaining this structure helps me keep track of everything in my personal and professional life. It's not about keeping everything perfect, but having a reliable system for capturing important information and also finding them easily when I need them. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe, and check out my other tutorials on OneNote. Thanks for watching, and bye for now. <laughs>